In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an iRig in After Effects, how to animate it to look natural and add details when you need to. We're going to start with the very simplest eye setup and add some more complexity and variety to it as we go on. The very minimum you need for an eye rig is the white of the eye and a pupil. To create the white of the eye with our pen tool selected, we're going to draw an almond shape. And let's rename that eye white because we always label our layers. And then we're going to create a circle with our ellipse tool, change the fill color to black and hold shift while dragging to create a perfect circle. And this is going to be the pupil for our eye. Now to constrain the movements of the pupil to just the wide of the eye, let's go over to our effects and presets panel and type in set matte, add that effect and take the matte from the eye white. And let's rename that to pupil while we're at it. And now it moves inside the eye freely. For now, that's all the detail we're adding. So we can select both of these layers, duplicate them with control plus D, and I'm gonna drag these over to the right here. We need to change the set matte on this pupil to that other eye, eye white two, and we're gonna rename those to right and left as well so we don't get lost later on. Now I'm gonna create a new null object by going up to layer, new null object, which will create it in the center. And I'm gonna parent both of our pupils to that null and call that pupil controller. Now, wherever I move that null, the eyes will look. Now you could parent one pupil straight to the other pupil, but then you would lose some ability to animate the pupils. And we're gonna to wanna to animate their scale soon to get some dilation happening. To animate a natural look around, let's keep throwing by the position of this null, bringing position up with P on our keyboard, selecting the stopwatch, and then a few seconds ahead, let's move these eyes to look left and then to look right. Let's select those keyframes and add some easy ease by pressing F9. And now let's see how they move. All right, they are moving, but we can make this motion a lot more smoother and a lot more appealing. So first thing we're gonna do is copy this middle keyframe here and paste it. So we have some time where it's just static looking at the left over here. I make the motion of the pupils a little bit faster by moving these keyframes together because your pupils do tend to move pretty fast. And I'm gonna select these, go up into the graph editor and just adjust the speed graph of these to make the easing a little more severe. There we are, that's looking a bit better. Now let's add some arcs to that motion. I'm gonna select my pen tool and hold on it till the Convert to Vertex tool is available. Click on that. And on these keyframes in the motion path, I'm gonna click and drag to bring out some Bezier handles and make a sort of arc shape that looks like a smile. There we are. Very few things in the natural world move in straight lines. So adding some slight arcs to their motion path, even if it's subtle, can help a lot to make them feel more natural and less robotic. Now, another thing I wanna do is animate the whites of the eyes moving as well subtly. So I'm gonna create another null object, rename that to eye white controller, and parent the whites of the eyes to that null. But when we move this null, the pupils don't follow. So let's parent our eye pupil controller to our whites controller. Now the pupil controller controls the pupils and the white controller controls everything. So let's open up that null's position and keyframe on the same areas where our other null is keyframed. And on the middle two keyframes, we're gonna nudge that a bit to the left. And then on the final one, a bit to the right. And let's easy ease those as well. I make that easing a bit more severe in the graph editor as well. So that just gives a little bit of extra punch and exaggeration to the animation as the pupils look around, as if the whole head is kind of turning slightly. Now we're gonna add a blink. We're gonna select our right eye and then toggle down, down here till we find its shape path. And we need to keyframe that. And we're gonna make a blink just after it looks to the left. So we're gonna keyframe it open. And then a few frames later, we're gonna, let's zoom in, select our pen tool, click on any of the points, and then just move these Bezier handles down into a blinking position. Sorry, this is kind of hard to see on the blue. I'm gonna close it below the halfway mark so that the upper eyelid closes a bit more than the lower lid. And then we're gonna move a few frames ahead again and, and copy this keyframe of the open position. Now you wanna make sure there's about double the length here between the eye close and the eye open. That's because we tend to open our eyelids a lot slower than we close them. That's much too slow overall, so let's move those both closer together. There, that's much better. And let's select those and easy ease those with F9. Now the speed at which your character blinks is completely up to you as an acting choice. Your character might blink very fast, want to do a double blink, or they might be opening their eyes very slowly from a nap. So feel free to adjust these based on what your scene and character need. So we've got one eye blinking, and I'm gonna show you an easy method to apply that to the other eye as well. So let's go over to our second eye, open its contents, shape, and find its path property. And then we're gonna alter option click the stopwatch here. And that's gonna open up our expression window. And we're just gonna grab our pick whip here and just pick whip that to the path of our eye that we've already animated the blink on. 
click enter and now it writes an expression there to take the exact same values of this other shape path and then apply them to this shape path. So when this one blinks, they both blink. So now whenever we want the character to blink, we just select these keyframes, copy them and paste them where we need them in the timeline, which is really nice and easy. Let's paste them at the very beginning and delete the open keyframe as well. So it looks like it's opening his eyes at the very beginning of the scene. So this is a really simple eye rig with basic shapes, but let's add some more detail to one of our eyes. A quick word about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with so much to explore, real projects to create, and also support fellow creatives. The classes are designed for real life with short classes so that you don't have to put your life on hold. And it makes it so easy to explore new topics and passions without any huge commitment. Some classes that I'm taking and getting really enormous inspiration from are Storyboarding for Animation by Sarah Beth Morgan, who is one of the best designers for animation working today, the basics of hand-drawn animation from Johannes Fast, a killer cell animator working at Giant Ant, character animation basics with B. Grandinetti, and digital character illustrations with Justina Stesic, where she teaches her entire process of creating memorable, whimsical characters. Skillshare is ridiculously affordable, considering the amount of top-tier classes from industry experts that you have unlimited access to for less than $10 a month on an annual subscription. And Skillshare is allowing me to give away two free months of premium membership. All you need to do is click the link and sign up in the description below to explore your creativity. Now ideally you're not adding any detail while you're animating and you should have you know hopefully had this approved during the design process but I wanted to show the animation setup in its simplest form because for your style this might be all that you need but here's how to add detail if you think it needs it afterwards but I highly recommend designing your eyes first. So we're going to add a visible eyelid to this right eye here so we're going to select the white of the eye and duplicate that layer with Control D. I'm going to rename that eye white right lid and now I'm going to place that below our eye white and I'm going to change its fill color to be a bit darker than the background so it stands out a bit. Let's open up all of its keyframes by pressing U and we can see that it still blinks as the other eye blinks. So we're just going to select all of these keyframes and delete them. So now when the eye blinks, this layer is revealed. Let's actually change that fill to a gradient fill as well. Just to add a bit more depth to it. Now to add an iris, which is the colored part of the eye, I'm just going to duplicate this pupil, rename it iris, change its color over here, drop it below our pupil, and then scale it up to something that looks natural. That seems right to me. And let's add a gradient feel to this iris as well. There we are. Now I'd like to add our pupil dilating at the start here as our eye first opens. So I'm going to open up the scale property on this pupil and keyframe it going from 80 where it ends up being and then increase it a fair bit. Let's go to 100 and then easy ease that last keyframe with F9. So now as it opens, the pupil gets smaller, dilating because it's now got much more light to see and it doesn't need to be that large. This is a little touch that I like to add to my eyes whenever we have, you know, a dramatic scene where an eye is opening. Most of the time you won't need to do this when any character is not going to be, you know, extremely close up or we're going to be focusing really on the eye. But I kind of think it looks cool, but you know, you don't need to do this for every blink. And let's add a gradient fill to this pupil as well. You can also add some additional stylized elements that don't really exist in the human eye as well. So if we duplicate our iris with Control D, we can give it a stroke, remove the fill, and then scale that up. And now we have a little ring outside our iris, which might be useful in your design, or it might just get in the way. Up to you. And now let's add a realistic reflection to this eye. Now I have a pre-comp of a stock image that I've prepared, and I'm just going to drag that in, and then I'm going to scale it down a touch, maybe so it covers most of the eye. And I'm going to set its blending mode to screen. I'm going to add a curves effect to increase the contrast. And then add a hue and saturation effect as well and desaturate it. And then add the set matte effect and take the matte from our eye white right. And we need to make sure this layer is continuously rasterized as well, which is this button selecting over here. If your set matte effect is looking kind of wrong and wonky, it's probably because both layers aren't continuously rasterized which is the reason why I put this image in a pre-comp in the first place. Now let's find a place where it looks kind of cool on our eye, maybe scale it up a bit. And to make it even more realistic, I'm gonna add the bulge effect. Drag it center over our, the middle of our eye here, and then adjust the radius into the width of our eye and the vertical radius up as a circle as well. We're gonna see this bulges our eye out of our set mat. So let's put this above set mat in our effect stack. So it bulges before it mats out. 
and let's adjust our bulge height as well. And then from here, we can reposition our image to see what suits. There, that's looking pretty good. And we just need to leave that image there. And now we've got a realistic reflection interacting with our eye. So we've got one of our eyes looking nice and detailed now, but we've added a few more layers. And if we wanted to add those to the left eye, we'd have to duplicate them and maybe link them all up again with the nulls and expressions like we did before, which we wouldn't need to do if we had designed this before we animated. So definitely design first. I've included some other basic rigs with different eye shapes in the project file, which you can download for free down in the description and use that as a basis for your own projects. But I'd really encourage you, if you are gonna use these eye rigs in your own work, take them and manipulate them to make them your own. So they stand out and become a part of your work. I've made a short playlist of some related videos that I'll think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. Thank you.